Hello everyone, welcome back to Foolish Engineer YouTube channel. Last time we explored the high side current sensor, but little all you noticed is that this circuit could only detect if the current is flowing in one direction. In this video, we will see how to design a high side current sensing circuit if you want to measure the current which is flowing in both directions. So let's start. One of the key reasons I started this YouTube channel is to bridge the gap between outdated Indian education system and actual skills needed in the industry. I am excited to share that this video is sponsored by Altium. If you are an electronic student in India, you can get Altium Designer for free under its Altium Student Lab program. It is an advanced electronics hardware design platform. It's a fantastic way to enhance your skill and increase your chances of landing a job in core electronics companies. And with its best feature, Altium 365, you can upload projects to the cloud, manage libraries, collaborate and review with your team. It supports all CAD files, making an electronics design faster and easier. Just use your university email to get started. Plus you'll receive a student license, a PCB design course, and a certificate recognized by top Indian industries. You also get a free access to Power Analyzer by Keysight. I have personally used Altium Designer since the start of my electronics journey, and I really recommend it. So don't miss this chance. You can get started with Altium 365 by clicking the link in the description. First off, let's talk about current sensing. Imagine you have a water pipe running from a reservoir and you want to measure how much water is flowing through it. In electronics, measuring the flow of electric current is crucial for monitoring and controlling the circuit, just like measuring the water flow. Current sensing helps us understand how much current is flowing through a particular part of circuit. This is important for applications like battery management systems in electric vehicles, where we need to monitor the current to ensure safety and efficiency. Okay, but why high side sensing? What makes it so special? Let's say you are in charge of a dam and your job is to monitor how much water is flowing out to the city. You want to measure the water before it gets to the CD, right? This way you can react quickly if something goes wrong. That's basically how high side current sensing does. It measures the current before it flows through the important parts of the circuit. In technical terms, high side sensing means you are measuring the current on the positive voltage side or high side of the circuit before it reaches to the load. The advantage? You can detect short circuits and ground issues before they cause major problems. In technical terms, it measures the current flowing through a load by monitoring the voltage across a low value resistor called a shunt resistor, placed on the high side. This setup helps us detect the current flow in both directions. So it is called bidirectional. To design this circuit, we will use a special current sense amplifier instead of a discrete op amp. There are a few advantages of using special current sense amplifiers. The current sense amplifiers are significantly designed to measure small voltage drops across a shunt resistor with high precision. They feature low input offset voltage and high common mode rejection ratio, which gives accurate measurement even in challenging conditions. But a discrete amplifier would require a careful selection and matching of components to achieve the same level of accuracy. And variation between components can introduce errors. For example, a typical current sense amplifier like INA240 from TI can offer an input offset voltage as low as 5 microvolts and a CMRR of 120 dB 
which is difficult to achieve with discrete components. CSAs are designed to handle high common mode voltages. This is particularly important for high side current sensing, where the voltage at the sense register is close to the supply voltage. But building a discrete circuit that operates at high common mode voltages require careful design with high voltage op amps and special consideration to avoid breakdown or saturation. This adds complexity and cost. The INA240 can handle common mode voltages ranging from minus 4 volts to 80 volts, making it easy to use in the applications where the voltage can be high. A CSA integrates multiple critical functions such as input buffering, gain control, and common mode rejection into a small package simplifying the design. This reduces the need for multiple external components like precision resistors or transistors. A discrete design requires more components and careful calculation which increases the design time and risk of errors. To design a discrete current sensing circuit, we would need op amps, resistors and possibly protection diodes, which not only increase the PCB space but also the complexity of the design. A CSA integrates all of this function into a single small IC. Many CSAs include built-in protection features like input over voltage protection, current limiting or output clamping, reducing the need of external protection circuitry because these are designed for just specific application. In a discrete design, we would need to add protection components to protect the circuit from high voltage transients or overcurrent conditions. So now I think I convinced you why using a current sense amplifier is a good choice. Let's see how a circuit looks, how it works and how to design one. Here is an example, we need to design a current sense amplifier which could sense the 40 ampere current in both directions. This sensor should give the output of this current in the range of 0.1 volts to 4.9 volts. For that we will provide 5 volts VCC, a reference of 2.5 volts and it should have transient protections which could handle these scenarios. The high side bidirectional current sense amplifier is composed of three main components. This shunt resistor, it is the critical part of the circuit where current flows through it and it creates a small voltage drop that is proportional to the current. Second is current sense amplifier. This amplifies the small voltage drop across the shunt resistor to create a readable output. And transient voltage separation diodes which protect the circuit from electrical transients like power surges. Let's break this down step by step. Step 1. As current flows through the shunt resistor, a small voltage drop is generated across it. The value of this voltage drop follows the Ohm's law, which is like this, where V shunt is the voltage drop across the shunt resistor, I load is the current flowing through the load and thus through the shunt resistor and R shunt is the resistance of the shunt. If the load current is 40 amperes and the shunt resistor is 3 milli ohms, then it would give us 120 millivolts, which is a very small signal and it needs to be amplified for further processing. The shunt resistor must be carefully selected to ensure that the voltage drop it's small enough not to affect the operation of the load but large enough to provide an accurate measurement. In this case, a 3 milliohm resistor is chosen because it strikes the right balance between minimizing power loss and providing a measurable output. Next step is to amplify this small voltage drop to a usable level. This is where the current sense amplifier comes into picture. The CSA takes the voltage across the shunt resistor and amplifies it according to its gain. The gain is chosen based on the desired output voltage range. Let's assume a gain of 20 for this amplifier. The shunt resistor voltage drop is 120 millivolts, so the output voltage 
will be around 2.4 volts. This 2.4 volt is now readable and can be processed by other systems like a microcontroller or ADC. Amplification is very important because the original voltage drop is too small to be directly measured or used in most of the electronic system. Amplifying the signal allows the accurate monitoring of the current. The choice of gain determines the voltage output range and should be selected based on the range of currents expected for our application. In this bidirectional sensing circuit, we measure both positive and negative currents. This is achieved by setting a reference voltage in the amplifier. For example, a reference of 2.5 volts might be used. The output voltage will vary around this reference voltage depending on the direction of the current. When the current flows in the forward direction, the output voltage increases about 2.5 volts. When the current flows in the reverse direction, the output voltage drops below 2.5 volts. For positive current of 40 amperes, the output voltage is 4.9 volts. For negative current of minus 40 amperes, the output voltage is 0.1 volts. This range of 0.1 to 4.9 volts corresponds to the full current range of minus 40 to 40 amperes. The reference voltage sets the midpoint of the amplifier's output range, allowing it to detect the both positive and negative currents. It is very important to check if the shunt resistor can handle the power dissipated due to the current flow. The power dissipated in the shunt is given by this formula. For 40 ampere of current and a 3 milliohm resistor, the shunt resistor must be rated to handle at least 5 watts of power to avoid overheating or damage. The power heating ensures that the resistor can operate safely without damaging or degrading over time due to excessive heat. This is particularly important in high current applications. Now the TVS diode protects the circuit from voltage spikes and electrical transients, such as those caused by lightning strikes or switching surges. It clamps the voltage to a safe level to prevent the damage to sensitive components like CSA or the shunt resistor. In this design, the TVS stand-up voltage is 36 volts and the clamp voltage is set to 80 volts. If the voltage surge of 60 amperes occurs, the TVS diode can clamp the voltage to 80 volts, preventing any damage to the circuit. And there you have it a high side bidirectional current sensing circuit, it might seem like a small part, but it plays a massive role in protecting and controlling modern electronics. Well, if you are stuck all the way till here, which means you love learning about electronics and its concepts. Well, guess what? Now you can take your learning experience up to a notch by joining the Foolish Engineer membership. Let me walk you through the perks that come with each level. First is give me references. As a member, you'll get access to exclusive reference files, simulation files based on which the videos are created, and a chance to vote on future topics. Plus, you get loyalty badges and custom emojis to show off in the comments. Second is answer to my doubts. This tier gives all the perks of the first level, plus you'll get priority replies to your comments where you can ask the questions based on the video topic and you get them answered very fast. And finally, help in my project. If you're working on your own project, this tier is for you. Along with everything from previous levels, you'll get development boards access which I use in my videos and I'll help you with your own projects, even in customizations. No matter what level you choose, you'll be joining an exclusive community where learning never stops. Hit that join button below to become a Foolish Engineer member today. Let's take our love for electronics to the next level. I hope you learned something new from this. Don't forget to check the description for references and simulation files. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.